it's time for another yum box and it's the holiday one I am so excited for this month's yum box because it's the holiday yum box where we get to try different yums from all over the place that people enjoy in relation to the holidays. So our card this time just says season's greetings and it has a lot of different things going on. <laughs> and then as always on the back of our card, we have our scorecard where we can rank the different yums. And here is our cheat sheet. Around the world we go. Hoo -hoo, there's interesting things in here. Oh, interesting. Okay. <laughs> the first one's an odd one. So our first yum is the salted egg yolk popcorn. Taiwan's most excellent holiday tradition from, as it said, Taiwan. Eggs, they're not just for breakfast anymore. That's because in Taiwan, they're the ultimate celebration food. Egg dumplings called zongzi are a staple of the summertime dragon boat festival. Egg yolk filled moon cakes are a must for the fall moon festival. And locals eat soy sauce soaked tea eggs on the lunar new year to ensure a year of wealth and prosperity. And then there's this extra special, extravagantly excellent popcorn. Was that too many egg puns for one sentence? While we can't promise it'll bring you riches, we can guarantee rich flavor and an even richer cultural background. So pop open that bag and let's celebrate the Taiwanese way. Smells interesting. Let's give it a shot. That was a roller coaster. Um, it's salty. It's strangely sweet. It's savory. What is this? If somebody just handed me this and I tried some without reading the label, I don't think I would have guessed egg yolk, but I would have been curious what interesting flavor that is. And thinking on it, it does taste a bit like egg yolk and popcorn. That's odd. I think I'm gonna like this next one. Our next yum is from France and it is the raspberry macaroon chocolate truffles filled with bits of raspberry macarons, macarons, excuse me, macarons. I really like macarons. It was Christmas day, 1895. The pristine snow was cold, but the ovens in French pastry chef Louis de Fleur's bakery ran hot. Last minute shoppers were looking for something new and delicious to serve their holiday guests. That was when inspiration struck and Chef de Fleur whipped up what we now know as chocolate truffles. The little morsels were an instant success and are now one of France's most famous desserts. Try them for yourself and savor the rich French chocolate with all the crunchy free sweetness of raspberry macaron cookies. Bon appétit. I really like raspberry, I like macarons, and I like chocolate truffles. So this should be fantastic. Let's try. Mm hmm It had a really good tart raspberry flavor and there were definitely little crunchy bits of macarons in there. Macaroons. Rones. Macarons. <laughs> there are definitely little crunchy bits of macarons in there and it was delicious. My only thing is that it tastes like it's dark chocolate and I'm not the craziest about dark chocolate. If this was milk chocolate I would be over the moon but it's still really good though. It is still really good, even if it definitely has dark chocolate. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> Next we have mocktail bonbons from the United Kingdom. Celebrate NYE with the UK's juiciest pub faves. If you're English and 18 or older, odds are you'll be headed to your favorite local pub to ring in the new year. But with these British mocktail bonbons, parents, there's no alcohol inside, the pub is headed straight to you instead. Pop open some bubbly Prosecco, sip on a fruity peach bellini, tip back a tequila sunrise, pucker up for a cranberry Cosmo, or opt for a classically British gin and rhubarb. Whatever cocktail flavor you choose, raise a glass full of these candies. The world's juiciest toast to the new year. But remember to always chew responsibly. I um, am not an alcohol drinker, so <laughs> I don't know what to think of all the interesting flavors going on here. I think this one might be a peach bellini. Let's try it. That's really good. It tastes very peachy. It was a really nice, soft, chewy candy, but it didn't stick to my teeth real bad. And it had really tart and bright flavor. That was delicious. Next, we have a yum from Argentina, and it is the Dose de Leche filled plum cake. 
Soft and airy with dolce de leche jam inside. You're holding the solution for family peace this holiday season, dolce de leche. According to legend, politician Juan Manuel de la Rosa had a maid who accidentally cooked milk and sugar for too long on the stove. When she returned, the concoction was so gooey and sweet, she thought she'd need to throw it away. But de la Rosa sampled it and loved it so much that he shared it with his political enemy, who was also his cousin, <laughs> as they discussed a peace treaty. We're basically saying that once everyone in your family tries this famous Argentinian Christmas cake, they might just start agreeing on, well, we don't really know, but at least they'll agree that it's delicious. Ooh, I'm excited. Let's try it. The Dolce de Leche cream inside, I enjoyed. I think it's the plum cake itself that's a little odd to me. Again, it's not that it's bad. Like, I'll finish eating the rest of this. Don't you worry. Ooh, with a nice breakfast tea. That'd be delicious. But there's something a little odd with the flavor there that I'm just not used to. And so it's a little, it's a little strange. The flavors came together in a very interesting kind of way. Ooh. Now we are off to Spain with the white truffle potato chips, a Spanish holiday delicacy. In Spain, tis the season of truffles. Starting in November, trained dogs scour the northern region of Aragon in search of the coveted underground fungus. Once sniffed out, the truffles are sold for between $250 and $350 per pound. It's no wonder they're dubbed the Black Diamonds of Spain. But even though the country is flush with black truffles, that doesn't help their other insatiable craving. For the white variety, milder, lighter, and tangier than the native variety, white truffles are imported to Spain in droves, making appearances in salads, garnishes, and sometimes in decadent potato chips like this. Okay. Maybe I need to go to the gym so I can open my yum box packages. Interesting. Curious. Let's try. This is one of those weird flavors where the moment it hits my tongue, I think, ooh, I don't like that. But then after it lingers for a few seconds, I think, I might like that. That's really interesting flavor. Hmm. I, I actually don't know if I like this or if I don't like this. On to Germany, we have dark chocolate gingerbread bites. Three layers of cookie, jelly, and press, parasipan, par parasipan, parasipan. Meet the holiday yum with it all. Invented in 1936, Germany's now classic Dominostein, Dominostein has four essential parts. One, a base of Lebkuchen, the gingerbread locals have been loving since the 13th century. Two, a layer of tart fruit jelly. Three, a slathering of persipan, a fluffy confection made from ground apricot kernels. And finally, four, a coating of luscious dark chocolate. But forget about counting layers. We'd rather count how many whole pieces we can eat. Let's try. Mmm. It's very spicy, not spicy like peppers and hot spicy, but like there's a lot of spices in that, like a lot of, I don't know, clove, ginger, cinnamon, like those type spices, uh, which I believe is probably coming a lot from that gingerbread. It was just a lot more heavily spiced than I was expecting it to be. So it caught me a little bit by surprise. That's really interesting. The jelly and the persipan do help to add some sweetness to help even out that spiciness from the gingerbread, I think. So that, it makes for a pretty good combination. This looks fun and interesting. Our next one is from South Korea and it's cinnamon sugar churros, a South Korean festival fave. Hop over to Seoul at the end of December and you'll be just in time for their Lantern Festival, an annual Christmas time tradition. I apologize for my pronunciation in advance. Gwanghamon Square gets a glowing makeover of lights, lanterns, and of course, a giant Christmas tree. But our favorite part is the street food. Churros are one of the most popular street foods in the entire country, with people munching over 3,000 of them a day. So it's no surprise they'd also make an appearance during the holidays, and simply why we needed to share the deliciousness with you. I am a fan of churros. Mmm, it smells like cinnamon and butter. All right, let's try it. Mm-hmm. Part of me just wants to devour this entire bag right now. Oh, those are really good. It reminds me a lot of eating Cinnamon Toast Crunch. 
so it's invoking this nostalgia in me too. Put those over there, I'm about to finish them. <laughs> Next, we have strawberry and pomegranate Turkish delights from Turkey. And it says, Turkey's famous New Year's Eve tradition. 300 years ago, Sultan Abdul Hamid wanted to woo his wives by gifting them a new dessert. He called upon his kingdom's many confectioners to craft the next big sweet, and one of them did just that. In his tiny Istanbul candy shop, Bakir Afendi mixed sugar syrup with starch, cooked it for six hours, then cut it into cubes. The result, Turkish delight, one of the world's most famous sweets and a Turkish New Year's Eve tradition. It's a very big piece. Let's try it. Okay. I don't know that I like that one a whole lot. The fruit flavor is very, very light, very faint. So I'm mostly just getting the flavor of the, I don't know, sugar cornstarch combination here, which isn't a super flavor for me. I'm not, I'm not crazy about that. Our next one is from Thailand and it is Tom Yum Coconut Rolls, Thailand's hottest New Year's tradition. In Thailand, you get to celebrate the New Year not once, but twice. The first celebration is the Thai New Year Songkran, celebrated April 13th, but December 31st is also considered a national holiday. No matter which New Year you're celebrating, it's almost guaranteed that you'll be slurping down a hot bowl of Tom Yum soup made with lemongrass, limes, and tons of herbs and spices. It's considered an important part of Thai heritage because it's such a perfect blend of local flavors. Crunch into these Tom Yum flavored coconut rolls and you'll be saying yum too. Let's try. Mmm. That really surprised me. So I thought, okay, maybe this is gonna taste a lot like coconut with a little bit of the flavors. Oh no, that was jam packed with flavor. It was very citrus, very lime forward and salty. And there were some other flavors going on in there that kind of blend it all in. That was really good. Ho 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 ho, I'm glad to see this one. This is from Jordan and it is assorted baklava. Flaky, sticky pastries with nuts. Ramadan was in the spring this year, but it's still a winter holiday, sometimes. The month long Muslim fasting holiday follows the lunar cycle, which moves backward every year. So while Ramadan 2023 began in March, in 2031, it'll begin in December. Regardless of its timing, the fast often ends with the same thing, baklava. Nine million Jordanians look forward to it every year, as do our longtime customers who know the syrupy, flaky, nutty favorite is our very own holiday box tradition. I've had baklava before that, um, you find in assorted packages like this at the grocery store. And I've always quite enjoyed them. Very sweet, very sticky, but very good. So I'm excited to try this one. I'm gonna go with one of these little guys. It's just so many layers of fine flaky dough that it creates such a unique crunch. And it tastes really good. It's very sweet, almost a little buttery. And that dough is quite nice. Now we get to an interesting one that I keep looking at as I dig through the box to get to different yums. So I'm excited to finally get to try this one. It's from Italy and it is garlic and parsley bruschetta bites. Basically a piece of garlic bread snack. Prior to the big holiday meal, Italians indulge in the tradition of apertissibus. I'm sorry about my pronunciation. A kind of cocktail hour where people enjoy drinks and small appetizers. The most popular appetizer, bruschetta, is a crispy slice of bread with a touch of olive oil and most commonly tomatoes. You can crunch into this holiday tradition with these super garlicky bites sprinkled with parsley. Try adding your own toppings for even more festive fun. Oh, it already smells so garlicky. Mmm, garlic bread. Oh, I'm excited for this one. Let's do it. Imagine if you had some garlic croutons that weren't quite as dense, that were a little lighter and crispier with probably a little extra garlic and butter on there. And that's basically what these bad boys are. That is delicious. Now onto the Netherlands where we have frosted cinnamon stars, a decoration and yum in one. Christmas ornaments in the Netherlands aren't just lovely, they're edible. That's because the Dutch decorate their Christmas trees with cookies. From branch to branch, you'll find cookies in all shapes and flavors, but these cinnamon stars are by far the most popular. You'll even find a convenient hole in the middle, perfect for ribbon tying. Try hanging these sweet cinnamony stars on your tree, if you can resist gobbling them up. I don't think I'm gonna hang them on my tree because I think I would rather just eat them. I like cinnamon cookies, let's try. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. It's like somewhere between cinnamon toast and a snickerdoodle. It's very light and crispy and it's sweet, but not overpoweringly so. I could eat a few of these, which is probably dangerous. <laughs> but that's really good, I like that. Our next one is from South Korea and it is Cinnamon Punch, South Korea's zesty New Year's tradition. We're finishing out this holiday feast the traditional South Korean way with a drink called Sujan Gua, I'm so sorry for pronunciation, or Cinnamon Punch. Immediately following the big New Year's Day meal, families pull out this extra spicy traditional drink. The combination of spices are supposed to help with digestion, which, let's be honest, is probably a good idea after a holiday feast. So let's raise one final toast to the New Year in the traditional South Korean way. Jinbe, cheers. Okay. Cinnamon punch. It didn't fizz like a carbonated beverage, so I don't know that it's carbonated. I'm going to go ahead and pour it over some ice. Let's see. That is, yeah, that's just straight cinnamon flavor. It's like if you took a cinnamon candy that's a very strong cinnamon flavor with a little bit of sweetness and just turned it into a drink. That's what it tastes like. This one's from the Ukraine and it is crab candy. Chocolate peanut powder in a crunchy candy shell. Okay, that doesn't sound too bad. During the weeks between Christmas Eve and Epiphany, the streets of Ukraine are full of music. That's because it's prime time for Kolodaki Christmas caroling. Carolers will dress up in colorful costumes going door to door to spread holiday cheer. The merrymakers are rewarded with gifts of fruit, cash, and sweets. Don't be alarmed if one of those sweets is called crab candy. The name comes from the hard pink shell. Crunch down and you're savoring a chocolatey peanut powder that melts in your mouth. And don't worry, there's no fishiness here. Only music to our mouths. Okay, good. I was really worried for a second. <laughs> okay, let's try. All right, I like the crab candy. That's a phrase I never thought I'd say, but that was really good. It was just not peanut butter, but peanut powder packed into the middle of that candy. So you're mostly just getting really nice peanut flavor, almost like peanut butter candy with just some added sugary sweetness from the candy coating around it. Pretty simple, pretty good. Oh, another from Italy. We have milk chocolate with strawberry popping candy. Truffles as exciting as Italian fireworks. Visiting Italy for the new year? You better watch your step and maybe bring some ear protection because Italians are positively bonkers for their New Year's fireworks displays. While Christmas is for family time, New Year's is when people live it up and party. Even when the public displays end, many locals keep the festivities going, with some even throwing fireworks right out of apartment windows. Prefer some peace and quiet? You can still get in some of the fun with these truffles filled with strawberry popping candy. They're like fireworks in your mouth. Bon appetit! I still have Pop Rocks doing their thing in my mouth right now, but that was really good. I really like that. I'm a big fan of strawberry and I really like popping candies. So I really, really liked that one. Um, there's not a whole lot to say on that one. It's just, it's chocolate with popping, strawberry popping candy in the middle. And it is very, very good. <laughs> now we go back to the United Kingdom for marzipan fudge. The flavor of British Christmas. You can't have Christmas in Britain without Christmas cake, and you can't have Christmas cake without smothering it in rich almondy marzipan. But that wasn't always the case. Originally, the decadent topping was reserved for a different cake on a different holiday known as Twelfth Night. But when the celebration was banned, the, for fear of the parties getting too out of hand, the English simply moved their celebrations and their cake toppings to Christmas, and thus marzipan topped Christmas cake was born. I think I had one marzipan flavored something in the last box, if I remember right, and it was okay. So I'm curious what this marzipan fudge is going to taste like. Yeah, I'd say that's good. It has some nice, light, caramelly, sweet flavor. And it's very nice and crumbly. It doesn't have any kind of odd flavors or odd aftertaste. So that's pretty good. Okay. Next, we have something from Peru. And it is Peruvian hot chocolate. Try the original drinking chocolate. This chocolate isn't meant for eating, it's meant for drinking. This unique bar is used to make chocolata, a fragrant hot chocolate enjoyed throughout Peru on Christmas Eve. After an extravagant family dinner, gift exchange, and spectacular fireworks show, locals finish the night with mugs of the piping hot cocoa. And that's in spite of the fact that Christmas marks the start of summer in Peru, with temps climbing as high as 77 degrees Fahrenheit. But maybe they're actually onto something. We'll certainly be drinking it again for Christmas in July. Okay, now this one obviously I can't try in here. 
I need to go to my kitchen to try this one. Away to the kitchen. Let's give it a try. The instruction said to use skim milk with it, which I am not a fan of and do not have. I actually only have um, Ripple, which is a pea milk. So that's what I used. So it's gonna taste a little bit different just because of the milk I used. But the flavors of the hot chocolate itself, it's pretty good. It's not my favorite. It does have a creaminess. You have a nice chocolate flavor. I think it's probably not quite as sweet as the kind of hot chocolate that I'm used to. Yeah, but that's, that's definitely not bad. Well, that was fun. I always enjoy the holiday boxes whenever we get them. I really enjoy the format of the box month to month of just diving into all kinds of treats from a particular country. But there's just something so special about this holiday box and seeing all of these different treats and yums that different countries like to eat and engage in around the holiday seasons. So. I, I really enjoyed this one. I cannot tell you how excited I was when I opened my door and saw the beautiful red box waiting for me. And it did not disappoint. There were a few odd ones in here, a few strange, interesting ones, but there were also some really good yums in this box. And um, I, I'm gonna be doing my best not to devour all of these delicious things <laughs> before I have time to share them. We have to space it out, right? Eat, uh, <laughs> eat sweets in moderation. <laughs> space it out and share it. <laughs> oh, but that was a wonderful box and a wonderful way to wrap up the holiday season. I'm wishing all of you the happiest of holidays and I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye!